called leader in America, in American history. So then, you have to listen to the leader. Listen to the leader. Listen to the leader. But listen, begin listening to the leader that is in your head. But if that leader is having a problem, if that leader inside the head is being dominated by the gin, then you have to go back into the chamber and clean it up. You know, they have what is known as spring cleaning. Spring cleaning. You know, they go in and they clean out the house and all the times people would take out rugs, sheets, everything, take it outside and hang it on a line and beat the dust out of it. Beat the dust out of it. And generally dust is considered as what? Being worthless. Then they give us a scenario in saying that we were created from dust. Now this is not just to be taken or to be taken simply as just oh dust and God brought us from dust. The word that we're going to look at that I put on the board, mutashi behai tun, that's how you're seeing it. And it comes from this verse that we're going to read now from Surah 3, the family of Imran, the family of Imran. And this is Surah 3. We're going to read Ayat 7 and make some comments. And before, before we read that verse, we're going to read from Surah 30, entitled Rome. The verse 42 and 43. A'udhu bilayhi shaitan nirajim. Bismillahi rahman nirajim. Say, travel through the earth and see what was the end of those before you. Most of them worship others besides God. 43, Ayat 43. But set thou face to the right religion. Before there comes from Allah, comes from God, the day which there is, no chance of averting. On that day shall men be divided in two. We see a big division in this country. Good and bad. Good and bad. Righteousness, evil. Always you can simplify what is transpiring by looking at good and bad, or righteousness and evil, or wrong and right. All of these I'm saying is basically the same thing. Once you make a distinction of what is the right decision, what is the right path, and for the believers, the believers, Christians, those of the Jewish faith, and the Muslims, once we make the decision, we become alive then we are to follow the middle of Abraham, of Ibrahim as it's pronounced in the Quranic Arabic. Once we become alive, then we are responsible wholeheartedly for ourselves. What is this coming alive? Coming from the dead, being pulled out of the dead, this dust, it is saying to you, it is saying to us, it is saying to humanity that basically you were nothing by yourself. Suddenly you were existing in the earth. Suddenly you were a moving creature, but moving to where? That old song, that old R.B. song said, you got me going in circles, around and around and around. So without knowledge, until knowledge comes, until the understanding of scripture, the best, the essence of what is right, the best. When we are doing certain things, I mean, even with food or whatever, we want the best. If we can afford a high dollar ride, a high dollar car, we want the best, that's good. You've earned that, we earned that as human beings. Clothing, shoes, a nice house, you want the best. Well, those that are good leaders, not those who seek to manipulate the minds and the spirits of humanity, of human beings. Not those who crave, who are those who they used to say, you're so greedy. Those who want it all. 
So God gives man revelation and he reveals to him in this statement about being created from dust, he's saying, I'm bringing you from nothing. I'm bringing you from nothing and I'm going to put you into something. I'm going to make you something. And sometimes we can say, well, boy, he's something else. She's something else. What we hear of Malcolm X, Malcolm Shabazz, all of Elijah Muhammad, Frederick Douglass, all of these heroes. So John the Truth, Harriet Tubbsman, Mary Cloud Bethum, Imam Wazidi Muhammad, many, many righteous men from us, from us, from the masses, from the people of color. Is this a bias, lecture, or talk, or discussion? No, it's not. But this is the month of February. The month that saw me class as being Black History Month. Isn't that something? We go through so many changes in trying to find an identity. Who are you? Do you ever ask yourself, looking in the mirror, or talking to yourself sometimes, as we often do? I know I do sometimes. Who are you? Ask yourself this. This for a few seconds now. Ask yourself, say, who am I? Are you comfortable with what you decide upon in those few seconds? Are you proud of who you are? If you can't find the answer, if you can't find comfort in asking yourself, who are you, then you turn to a higher source. So for those of us who are Muslims, those of us who are believers, we are seeking the best help. I love to say that. And I say it often because we want the best thereof. We have this opportunity now while we are living to turn to this book, the Quran. If you haven't read it, you might say, well, my book is the Torah, my book is the Quran and the Bahá'í Gita. That's, those are my books. This is your book too, but we just say, what do you call it, uh, suggested reading. And they might have some, the book of the month, the book that has been decided, this is the bestseller. Well, if you read it, if you go into it in honest, it's like if you're being invited out to a party or to dinner with a group of people. And you figure, say, well, you know, so-and-so is cool. They invited me out to come out. Friends are there, so I'm going to go out. So you're going out looking to have a good time. The mind is looking for peace. The heart is looking for peace. And we ask a lot. A lot teaches us how to pray, teaches us what to ask for. Sometimes we don't know what to ask for. We might just go, oh, Lord, please give me some money. Oh, Lord, please bless me with this cup. Bless me with that. But when you begin to understand, you say, oh, Allah, oh, God, oh, Jehovah, whatever you may say, please bless me and perfect my light. Perfect my understanding. Perfect what I'm looking at in the world. Please make it clear. Let's read Ayat 7 from Surah 3. Surah Three, the family, the family of Imran. And remember, Miriam, or Mary, the mother of Esau, the mother of Jesus. Listen how I'm doing that. The mother of Jesus. She was a member of the family of Imran. And it is said, somebody read the Quran and said, oh, no, there's something wrong with that. Because they say that, oh, oh, no, this is wrong. Say, Harun, or uh, Aaron, was the sister of Mary, Miriam. Now, when you understand what season, what ingredients, or how to connect this language, and you understand this is not a fly-by-night revelation. These are not just any old type of signs or verses. But these are verses that is coming to you to cause you, to make you, to assist you, to assist us in thinking. Many are afraid to think. We can go through, we can get to hell that's in the environment, and we don't want to think about nothing. We want to push everything else aside and stay in a zone that gives us comfort. So the Quran, it comes to give us comfort. We read Ayat 7. He it is who sent down to thee the book. In it are verses, basic or fundamental, of established meaning 
They are the foundation of the book. Others are allegorical. But those in whose heart is perversity follow the part thereof that is allegorical. Seeking discord and searching for its hidden meanings. But no one knows its hidden meaning except Allah, except God. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in the book. The whole of it is from our Lord. And none will grasp the message except men of understanding. Sarkala, they love him. Now this verse that I have put on the board, or this word that I put on the board, Mutashadi Hatun. They have translated this word allegorical. And many are confused or they are seen and say, oh, don't nobody know the meaning? Don't nobody know the meaning of this book? But Allah. But as you read the book, and as you understand concepts, as you understand context and content, what's in that bottle? Content. What's inside of that? What's inside of here? What's inside of my head? What's inside of America? They're so different than other countries. What kind of mentality exists there? Is it enough to give us balance? Many still look at it and say, this is the most powerful country in the world. We have the greatest military there is. And look at Russia. Look at America and Russia, an armed struggle. Look at these two that's trying to stop someone else from having nuclear weapons. Really, we shouldn't have them at all. Weapons, as the class, weapons of mass destruction. But you don't want other countries to have these weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction within our own environment. Ignorance. That's a dangerous weapon. That's a dangerous weapon. That's ignorance that's existing in our house as Americans. Our White House, pure in its highest form, ignorance that will belittle a people from another country, and you call it a black black hole. You talk of you talk of Africa. You talk of other so-called again third world countries, industrial nations, and you put them down. You put down African Americans. You put down Mexicans, Americans. You put down people that are not in your range, in your area, as you say. They can't walk in your shoes. The low class, as you might say. You put down women, and you expect America to back you. Well, God gives us the Quran, And while we are sprewing from our mouths, from the mind now that God has given us, this word, mutashabi hatun, mutashabi hatun, Going further than this allegorical. What is what is allegorical? Anybody? What is what is allegory? What is that? It's a what? A hidden meaning? Okay. Anything else? A parable. parable. Say that. A parable. A parable. Very good. Anything else? Those are good answers. It's a parable. Some say something that looks alike. A parable. A parable. What is a parable? A story. Now, so we say, oh, I'm reading stories from my favorite book. Stories from the Bible, stories from the Quran, because they're stories. Now, look how the wicked, how the shaitan, how the devil plays with the mind of the masses. If you get on the elevator, you say, what, you say, what story are you going to? The levels on the floor we call stories. This is a 10-story building. Playing with the minds. A story. And the higher you go, the stories become a little bit more complicated. They become more riddles. They play games with the language. And although they are using English terms, they put a language out there that you can't comprehend. 
Friday, I gave examples, and some might remember this language from a time gone by. I was given a scenario about the word news. And I was saying to those who were present that the word news, look at it. Where does the news come from? You have local news. You have national news and international news. And you have the N for north, the E for east, the S for south. Then you have the north. So you have all of these different, these, this different information, N-E-W-S, pardon me, west and south. So you have all of this information coming in across the country, but the local news, this is Shreveport News. Then you have another way you can look at that word news, moving into a higher understanding. The N standing for news itself. The E standing for entertainment. The W standing for weather. The S standing for sports. Do you hear me? Are y'all hear me? Are you understanding? Yeah. So then, that's, where, that's what the news is about. When you cut on the news, they give you something pertaining to what's going on, maybe political-wise, educational-wise, or what have you. They give you all of this information. New businesses that might be coming into town, disasters, fires, murders, something sensationalized. Then they give you the E for entertainment. They're keeping you abreast of the entertainment. They want you to look at it and to be dominated by just entertainment, singing and dancing, pulling your mind. I'm not saying that it's bad in its proper place and time. But then this entertainment, though, is good, but we're being entertained. The stars, the actors, they are looked at by the public. They are looked at as being these people who have high esteem. That's so-and-so and so-and-so. That's, that's Halle Berry. You know, they have all these different, different names, all these stars that entertain us, that we enjoy. Certain people are playing in certain movies or stories we want to see that particular movie. Then, as we go on and we begin to look, and suddenly we go back to the weather, this N-E-W-S, this weather, but we also want to look at what else do they give us in high dosage? Sports. You get to sports. And what is the highlight it, it appears to be? Football. NFL, football season. Then basketball. Now they're they're inundating the society now with hockey and also soccer. And so constantly we are being groomed, we are being shaped. So this word that is used, mutashabi hatun, allegorical, but when you look deeper into this word, it is speaking of an instance where you are to be more analytical. You are to be more logical in your thinking when you receive this revelation, when you receive information that comes from books that are known as scriptorial books, that are known as revelation that came to the major prophets. Be mindful that all of your prophets went to a particular people with the exception of Muhammad ibn Abdullah 1400 years ago. His message was for the entire world. His message was one to teach humanity as to how things come in implements, in stages, on levels. But you have to qualify yourself. You have to acknowledge your growth and in your development. I mentioned also, within the last week or so, as to how Muhammad lived 40 years among us. But this 40 years in terms of actually days and nights is not pertaining to that. It is actually, it's an indication to have you to look at the number four. Everything in scripture, you should look at it. Even if it's the word wa, if it's the word and, if it's the word but, 
What is it talking about with the book? What is but qualifying? What is this conjunction and? What is it connecting? What and how are you to connect what you read and what you already know? You have seen things in your life. You are being qualified. You are being educated every day, every hour, every minute. You are qualified. You are writing your own history. You are writing your own scroll. They hold the scrolls up. You see those old pictures of Romans. That you have the scroll. You know, and you have the script. They write on there. Whatever the king or the queen or whoever is saying. Uh, they're having a big meeting. The script. He's writing down what is being said. The things that we think. The things that we do. We believe in angels. The Muslims, the believers, are those who believe in angels. We're to believe in the books. We're to believe in the prophets. And certainly to believe in God. So all this is going on, but it's not to be complicated. So when you look at the Quran, when you look at this word that I have given you, it's telling you to become grounded. It's telling you to analyze when you are writing, whatever it is that you are doing. When you are writing with your actions, realize that you will have to stand accountable for your actions, the good ones and the bad. And God gives us a taste of the paradise in this life. And he shows us, we give it out to ourselves, the hell. The hell that we catch, as we often say, the hell that we catch in this life, oh man, if I believe in a hell, I don't want none of that hell. I don't want to see the one that causes complications and unrest, that causes me to move out of my domain, out of my peace. And the scripture speaks of leading me by the still waters. Not just somebody that's going by the water, although the water is very peaceful at times until it becomes disturbed. But lead me by the still waters. This water, I'm talking about this water, how it can be so calm and so beautiful early in the morning. Late in the evening, we see the water begins to come to rest. As you gain an understanding, as you study to show thyself approved, now the mind is 40 years, this thinking of this man who God raised up from among the masses. It's 40, it's four. It is speaking of a time where he was coming up naturally in his nature. You're trying and you're to study the nature. You're to study your mother, mother nature. You're to respect mother nature. You're to respect your nature. Your body will speak to you. Your body will teach you. You can become so disturbed, you can put something in your belly or in your stomach, pardon me. You can put something in your stomach. And if something, if it doesn't agree with you, it's going to cause an uproar in the heart of your, in the heart of your body, in your stomach. So certainly we speak of the heart, but we are talking about this, this belly, this factory that takes things and it, it grinds it up, it churns it up. Old grandmother used to take a churn, she'd be churning that milk. And then she would get, she would churn it for so long and she would get the butter, the cream off the top. Churning, producing, being productive. Well, our bodies are always productive. Our bodies are always looking and seeking to become stronger. It performs this work naturally. But we can take the body out of its work. We can put things into the body that cause the body to be destroyed. We can take the body of Christianity, the body of Christians, the body of Christ, the body of Christians, the body of Christ, the body of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, the body of Moses. You have to understand this body, this coming together, the congregation of each of these religions that I've mentioned, and other religions. But speaking of these main three that have caused more progress in the world, Judaism, Christianity, and of Islam. So speaking of the body, when you put something into the body that is not pure, in this body, the way of Islam has been put together, and this religion that God says, I prefer, I have perfected for you, this religion, the middle of Abraham, and Islam, this religion, you say, oh, Islam, it means peace. Certainly it does, but you got to work for it. And it is so pure, if something is dark, it can't stay with this. It's not me, it's God who says he protects this. 
He protects this book. You can't change it. Because every day, there are those who are coming forth, those who are not toy, those who are not phony, those who are real, those who are not taking the knowledge and the wisdom that's true and manipulating people and manipulating their own selves. Stop manipulating yourself. You can't come to the righteous. You can't come to the believers and fool the believers. I remember they used to say, back in the time we called, called the first, say, can you fool the believer? And then the, the reply was, and you remember? Not nowadays. Not nowadays. There's no fooling. You, you're not going to fool that old me. Look, let me tell you something. Oh, you might get by every now and then, so you think. But the law is going to bless me to know what I need to know. I don't know everything, neither do you. He's going to bless you with what you need to know. He's going to bring you a warning. Doesn't the Quran say, this is not me saying this, I'm repeating it, I'm teaching, I'm sharing. But doesn't the Quran say that Allah will raise one up from among you? You can't accept someone coming from among you. You can't see that I've come from among you. Ooh, what is he saying now? All over the country, there are those who are raised up in their community. And as I often allude to and say to you, in your family, you might be that one that has been raised up. But once you're raised up, don't you know sometimes it's hard being at the top? It's hard because you are standing for right and there are others trying to tear you down. There are some that come with the schemes and they think you don't see them. Like the little child, I'm always talking about you. Love children. But as an adult, those who are put away childish things, as an adult, you watch the growth of the child and you watch them try to manipulate you and try to have their way. Brothers and sisters, we don't have a way other than the way of we are believers, the way of the middle of Abraham, the way of Prophet Muhammad, the way of Esau. But Muhammad comes. You're talking about the icing on the cake. I mean, this is all the way through. Sometimes you eat a cake, the icing is pretty good, but the inside is something wrong. Sometimes we can dress up and look so good. But what about the inside? I remember, listen, this might offend some of you. I remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I wanted that to soak in. Because some want us to condemn this man in our history that did something for all of America. So-called whites and so-called blacks for all of America. He helped them with their thinking to realize themselves. And he knew that he was using a mystical language. He created a myth. And more so, this miss was given to him by Farad Muhammad. Some call him Dr. Farad Muhammad. Some call him the Savior. We know he wasn't the Savior, but he was doing the work. And it worked for some. It brought about a change in those who were not educated. It changed a lot of people's lives. It gave them something to be proud of. But after a while, the miss had to be broken down. That came with Imam Wazidi Muhammad who had the largest conversion ever in America than anyone and yes. converting millions to El Islam knowing that what his father taught wasn't El Islam but oh it was so good and so sweet you can have different desserts some a little better than others I mean that's I, I guess I like them all I love a good apple pie and some chocolate cake and some, I, oh, I can just talk about food for the longest but there are different things that come to a psalmist that's much better than the other. And when you come with the teachings of the Quran, the excitement, I'm not drunk. I, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. This is good stuff. And you should have an appreciation for the truth. You should have an appreciation when someone comes to you and assists you in seeing your ills. This is a religion either you do or you don't. Ain't no in-between. You, when you put your word out there, the Quran says, why do they say that with their mouths what they are not producing or projecting in their heart? You can't talk this. You can't talk this. This religion is about action. And any good leader, you won't be worried, please listen. You won't be concerned about how much my anniversary is this year. Oh, he's against, he's against, uh, he's talking about our pastors that they shouldn't have. I didn't say you shouldn't have an anniversary for you. That's a wonderful thing that you respect those of the cloth. But just make sure that the cloth is clean. Well, I guess that explains that. 
Make sure that these that are your religious leaders, they're not trying to mount every sister in the church. That their morals are straight. That their values are straight. That when they teach the scripture, they teach the scripture that is beneficial to all, not using some secret, far-fetched language. Not calling you to come into their secret orders. To come into their secret chambers. And you have to sell yourselves. Don't give anybody the privilege of controlling your spirit, your heart, your soul, your mind. It's yours. It has been given to you. It has been perfected. It is natural. It is beautiful. It is strong. It has great abilities and possibilities. A lot put all of this in us. But that 40 years, this is what it's talking about. How this man came for this 40 year period. What are they saying? The things that he experienced naturally. He was so sincere in his coming, in his doings. Then God blessed him. With the correct knowledge. He was tired of struggling. He was in pain in his chamber, in his mind. He was looking, he was seeking. So this talking about this allegorical. No, this man was analyzing his situation. He was trying to see, but he couldn't come to a solution by himself. He recognized that. And he met Jabril. That Jabril came and squeezed him three times. Well, the second time he got it, but the third time. He had the knowledge of the world. Another way of saying, I can see now. Read in the name of our guardian Lord. This is also saying like, hey, I can't read no other way because I didn't see it on my own. No, I'm seeing it. I understand this. I can take the things from the four directions, the north, east, west, and south. I can break them down. I can see them. I know the problems that exist. You have problems because you are tribalistic. You have problems because you are disrespectful. You have problems because you are greedy. You have problems because you lie to yourself and others. Boy, I have my days. Tell my brother. They say, boy, you lie so good, you lie to yourself and believe it. That's a liar, boy. You lie just that good. You believe your, your own lie. No productivity other than being more productive. And if you catch it in one lie, you go somewhere else. And that's what the president does. He goes from one point to the next, trying to come up the lie. But this is why I say this is a great time. Do you know it was even a great time during Nixon era? During the Bush era? Great times. Why is that? Because the righteous are able to see the corrupt among them. We are to stand on truth. No matter who is against. And then the Quran say, tell the truth, stand for the truth, even if it's against yourself. I have been wrong. Oh, I have wrong. And then they say in scripture, oh, I have wronged my own self. That's what it says. This is the prophet talking. Anybody know who that was? What the prophet said that? Jonah. I, Jonah. Jonah? What, did Joseph say it? Did Abraham say it? Show me how I bring the dead to life. That's scripture. That's Quran. Abraham. 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 Said I wrong myself in bringing in and accepting and believing others to be God and you are the one God. Only one God. That breaks down. No more confusion with that. So those who have a perversity in their heart, the make-believers, a perversity in their heart, those who prefer darkness and think you can bring darkness into this life, it ain't happening. You're going to always have those who will stand up and will speak for what is right. Dr. King spoke for what was right. He was killed for that. Same thing with Malcolm and others, Mecca Evers, many, many people that we have no idea about. We don't have an inkling about. We have so many African Americans and others in this country who were killed for standing up for the right, standing up for justice for all people. We hear a language say freedom and justice for all. Well, you have to be a fool not to see that everybody is not being treated justly. And that the public, that the masses are being milked. 
But there are the believers who are still standing up. You're going to always have somebody to stand up. And if you're right, you'll have others standing up for you. I remember a time in Shreveport, Louisiana. We were downtown. We just called it dropping the bombs. We were talking about no terroristic stuff. We just called it a, we just called it a Muhammad speak bomb. Passing the bomb. Walking, going into the neighborhoods, passing the, passing the bomb out, the paper out. Because we were saying the information, the knowledge that was in that paper, and we was pushing what the other lines were was saying, we believed in it. And we still believe the best that was in it. But we were downtown selling papers, and the police came down, and they were harassing us. And the police officer came up, I had my papers in the arm, walking, he came up and took his elbow. Boom! Knocked my papers out of my arm. Now I looked at him and said, I'll be back. I went and got the brothers. To show you, we didn't feel nothing. That's where our minds were. I go and get the brothers, however many was downtown, just on every corner across. People used to dress up in those days. There weren't any malls. So everyone got dressed on a Saturday. And you go downtown with your vines on, and you selling. You, you just moving around somewhere looking for companionship. I mean, just to go down and have a good time. And so I went and got the brothers and told them what this officer had done. And we tracked him down. Can you imagine running the police? Now, I'm not speaking against good police officers. I'm just telling you what transpired how we were, were, has, uh, were harassed by trying to stand up for what was right. So can you imagine running a police through downtown? I mean, he was giving it. We couldn't catch him. He ran inside a building and, and closed the door. And so we went back on the main street. Before we knew it, there were police, you're talking about the early 70s, racism, they were showing it even more so, other than today, because I mean, it's coming from everywhere. But at that particular time, they came and they surrounded us, till we had in our mind, we finna die, we finna fight. So, we in the middle, like a nucleus, police surrounding us. Now, I was saying how you would be protected, how you would be here, even by non-Muslims. The citizens that were downtown, they came out, and sometimes we'd be trying to sell them the paper. I don't want that paper. Get that paper out of my face. But when they was bothering the brothers that they were saying, they came out of those doors, crescents and other stores, say, let them brothers alone. And we looked up, and the, and the police, they looked and saw what was going on. They disbanded. They let us alone. So I'm just saying, if you were for the right, you will have those who will stand up. But I'm also saying to you, respect those. Even our Elijah Mama said it. And I know there are some of you who see our message abroad, and we've gotten some hits on Facebook or whatever on our, on our website, and I appreciate that. But we are speaking about our history and how we came up. So I'm saying, as he said, respect those who respect you. But don't be a fool. If it's your time to die, you're going to die. But only a law controls the death. Don't be afraid. Nothing is going to happen to you. You're not going to leave here. Nobody's going to kill you. None of that, unless it's by the permission of Allah. Oh, did you say that, that the God would let somebody just kill me? We all had expiration day. You look at a, look at a cane, look at some food or whatever, it's an expiration day. Oh, this is old. Let me throw this away. But we have an expiration tag on us. We're not going to live forever. But while you are living, try to live a righteous life. And listen, enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Don't go back. Once you come out of a dead zone, once you come out of the mud, don't go back into the mud. Let it go. That's something that happened. But everyone sitting in here today at Master of Taco, Shreveport, Louisiana, you have had an experience. I'm looking at you. We all have had experiences. Some horrible. And a whole lot of good ones. We often, we've been, we've been pro-programmed that we see the bad more than we see the good. My mind puts me as an imam, as your leader. I always try to see the good in you. Those of you that are here and others that don't come here anymore. Still, I try to see the good. But sometimes that bad I see when you direct it is putting something into the body. Putting something into this, this master, this group. Causing an upheaval. You might not like some of the things I might not do. I do. That I might not do and that I do. But my intentions is upon having our house clean and not being pretentious. 
It's either you do or you don't. We need the help of every Muslim in this community. If they are Muslims the other way in Shreveport, Louisiana, they should be right here with us at Matthew of the Tower. <laughs> Say that boldly. But when you come, come righteously. Don't come with gain. Because everybody is together. We are this body. We are sure a body in the sense. Though sure means a lot of other things. It's something much more positive. Some of you are not even ready for sure. So thank Almighty God as I do. As we should do as a body. That we want to keep this together. We don't want to bring any indecency in this community. But we have a wonderful opportunity to let the world know. To let Shreveport know even more so that we have something to offer. We are respected. And for some, you might not know it, I'm more respected outside of these doors than I am inside of these doors. You should think about what I just said. There are those that respect your imam much more than some of you do. If you did, I would get more support. I'm not talking about money. I mean, when you make a commitment, because you made a commitment, it's up on the wall, the Shahada Tan. Once you were in that 40th growth, that 40th period, I gave you the four directions, how do you raise? How do you raise the dead? Say so you take four birds and you place them on mountains. You know what mountains represent? Government. Leadership. The best is to come out of your house, there's to come out of your house, there's to come out of your family life. The best, that's what you want to project, the best. Don't be down on yourself. Allah wants you up. Allah wants. Allah is always giving. God is always giving. I used to love that old song in the church. It might can't come into a close. It would say, "You can't be God giving. You can try and say no matter how you try, but still, we should be those who want to give. When you have those that treat you right, that teach you right, you should support them. And when you come to them, come real. I'll stand up against the world." And bear witness that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger and our prophet. Peace be unto you. Thank you for viewing Islamic perspective, a call to freedom. Assalamu alaikum.